All righty, this is the Bighorn Medicine Wheel sitting at 9,000 feet, Medicine Mountain. It's a National Historic Landmark, uh, and it's made with limestone rocks on a limestone bed. And it's quite mysterious for the most part. Uh, scientists, uh, anthropologists speculate exactly what it was used for, for by ancient people. Although it is known uh, as the medicine wheel, there are over 100 medicine wheels in this area that I like to refer to as medicine wheel country, also known as big sky country. Most of that big sky country line east of the continental divide, east of the mountains there where the wind blows and the grass grows. The medicine wheel, of course, is known uh, for its celestial guidance. And we can see from this uh, photo that the cairns going out from the middle of there indicate uh, many different celestial happenings throughout the year, including the summer, summer and winter solstice, the sunrise and the uh, moonrise. Tribes, however, view the medicine wheel as the original source of the ceremony, the Sundance. The Sundance is uh, probably the most unique ceremony shared by the Northern Plains people. Uh, it's not found elsewhere outside of the Northern Plains and therefore seems well connected to the medicine wheel. For those people who lived in the Medicine Wheel country, uh, they had to develop a culture that would sustain them on this land. Uh, hunting bison was not much of a gamble in this country if you understood that the bison always followed the wind and the wind always smelled like grass. And so all you had to do was go where there was wind and grass and they would be there. My tribe was one of those groups that came to the Medicine Wheel country and had to abandon many of their cultural practices. Our linguistic ties trace us back to the Cahokian Mounds where we built mounds and grew corn and became one of the largest cities in the world at the time, about five to 600 years ago. Uh, there were other places around the globe about 2,000 years ago and uh, during the time of the agricultural revolution that created pyramids and structures such as mounds. And many of them we can find in the ancient world all throughout the continents, uh, the seven continents. Of course, these... Uh, Societies were based on uh, domestic agriculture. Uh, here in the New World, it was corn, beans, squash, and potatoes that fueled the wealth. Uh, but specifically corn, of course, in the Old World, we have grains such as wheat that allowed wealth to uh, grow in communities. Also during this time, we know in human history of many important and significant exoduses of people leaving these areas where they have been enslaved or forced to build mounds or temples or uh, what have you, pyramids, and find a way eventually to seek freedom through dreams. And the American dream is a very old one. Uh, my tribe had a dreamer that led us to the Bighorn Mountains uh, about 500 years ago along the uh, Great Lakes region. He fasted and saw a vision of the mountains which led us here about 400 years ago. We brought our corn with us and we tried to grow our corn here, uh, but we found it was uh, not the best idea. And so uh, we decided to, again, take advantage of all the local plants that are available throughout the different seasons, everything from the berries to the uh, wild roots, all available. We learned how to live in the circle. Rather than staying in the same place all year and growing, crops. We learned how to move our camp down, taking shelter in the uh, river bottoms during the winter and then leaving when the uh, floods came and heading up to the high plains to get away from the mosquitoes and the grizzly bears. We learned from the tribes that were here about the significance of the celestial bodies and how those bodies were connected to all of our ceremonies, including the sweat lodge, uh, the crow sweat lodge. Uh, all four rounds are connected to the stars and uh, their meanings are expressed in the pores that are used during those rounds. We learned because, uh, these ways from the tribes that were already here because we all spoke the same language, sign language, uh, a lingua franca unlike anything else the, the globe has ever seen, from Alberta, Canada, all the way down to Texas, from the Continental Divide to the Mississippi River. And we learned how to live within the circle in a balanced way within our community. This is a giveaway ceremony, a Lakota giveaway ceremony, where a person who has achieved success is giving back to their friends and loved ones who have helped them achieve that, a self-imposed tax, if you will. 
We believed in balance in our dreams, balance in our waking life, in our elders and in our youth. This is Chief Plinikus who had a dream at 12 years old on top of Crazy Peak where he foresaw the coming of the Bozeman Trail. And that dream is very well documented. And the tribe listened to that 12-year-old boy and helped him to achieve his full potential in life. Abraham Maslow was one of those anthropologists who took note of the amazing ability for Plains Indians to encourage their youth to achieve self-development. And he developed, ironically, a pyramid-shaped uh, form to uh, encompass the circular model that native peoples had developed. And underneath all of this was a spiritual capital, which, by the way, is the only capital that you can take with you. He noticed this, that the tribes saw, uh, sought this through their ceremonies rather than material wealth, and he saw that this was how people achieved their full potential. Here are a few more visual aids to help us understand Maslow's theory. This one taken and put in an academic form, in a circular form, and this is a pop culture figure that most of us would see in a rearview mirror on a souped-up pickup here in Montana uh, with tribal plates. But regardless of whether or not you believe in the circle, you have to uh, believe in the awe that it inspires us when we live within that circle and align ourselves with it and become integrated with it and recognize it in the, for what it is, who we are. So thank you.